Good afternoon. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, this message that God sent me is is deep. May God knows how we have followers like this. <laughs> It is strong, strong message that God is sending me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for being our God. O God, be glorified, be magnified in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you for the grace to be sent by you. Because I want to believe it is a grace. A lot of people want this, but it's not possible. It is a grace. It is a privilege that you can send me out to say those things that a lot of people, despite having a lot of followers, they will not want to say. Father, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for another time today in your presence. God, please fill me with your spirits, wash me with your blood, anything that will not let you move through me, let the blood of Jesus wash them away. But I also pray that as the word of God is going out to people that, oh Lord, let you speak to them. Let people hear the word of God and let it have a positive change in their lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, have your way today. Father, take control. Take all the glory. Jesus Christ, take glory. Take charge. Oh, God, take all the glory. Speak through me. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Yes. I know I should have been here since yesterday night. (laughs) You know, the topic was not coming. I started praying since that, not even in the evening that I started praying from afternoon that I know that I must come for, for, for discussion in the evening. I was praying, message did not come. In the night I was praying, message did not come. At least I was awake till 4, 4 a.m. I didn't receive any message, I think. From that past four, that was when I slept off. I did not even know when I finally slept off. Message did not come. As I slept, I woke up this morning. And God gave me the message. I'm like, ah. So this is the reason why the message didn't come on time. Because it's too powerful. And I'm like, hey, Jesus. What am I going to say? Ah. And contrary to this thing that God is sending me. The people that have followers, they will only want to say things that will please people, things that will suit their mind. Now, me, I'm praying for followers every day. Because I know if I have followers, if I have more streams, YouTube will pay me, other mark will pay me. As I know, and what I'm saying now, it's not interesting people, I know. How can you how can you take sword, you use it and pitch somebody, then that person will now say, Come and collect money. No now. So it's God himself now that will bless me. It's God that will go and bring people that are truly, truly blessed by my messages to come and bless me. Because I don't know how God will do it. But what I'm just trying to say there is that. I must do the work of God because it's a covenant between me and God. I didn't promise God that I will will be saying things that will suit people's hearts and they will be giving me money. People will give you money if you are are saying things that will make them stay in their sin. All those pastors that they are going to their churches, you know, very, very not correct things that they are doing. People are going there because they make them comfortable in their sin. For me, I have covenant with God. I will not do such things. I remember the very first time I knew about contest creation. That day, since that day, I made up my mind. I said, God, whatever I'm going to do must please you. 
And that's why it has been difficult to grow in it because a lot of people want to satisfy the flesh. Why the spirit is 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 lacking or is is raised up. For me, I promise God. I promise God. And if it's because of wealth, if it's because of money, if it's because of riches, the Lord said riches is for him. So it's not me that will that will be doing sinful things or fraudulent things or lying to people to become rich. It's not my it's not me. I will wait on God to bless me by himself. And he does. He actually does. It's just that we the nowadays Christians many times people think God will not do it, or maybe it's taking too late. It's not taking too late. He's just taking us through the process because of the glory he wants to give us. And God always has the best. So let's go to the topic so that I will not do too much preamble. I have to do that preamble because even me, myself, the message is too strong for me. That I was even like, God, ah, this is strong. God said, hey, you just have to say it. And that is in, oh God. Is it First Kings or First Chronicles? I think it's First Chronicles chapter fourteen. I'm coming. I, I just finished reading it. Okay, it's First Kings chapter fourteen, verse one. About Jeroboam. Wait, why am I forgetting a lot of this? The, the real topic here is heavy tidings. Yeah, that is the topic. You see, the topic is heavy tidings. That's why I had to do that small prayer. But what I'm, I'm about to say is heavy. Even me said that I want to say it is heavy. I, I was like, God, what kind of topic is this? I was expecting maybe God would give me a topic of Sexual purity, you know, that topic, I like talking about it. Or addressing men. God didn't give me this topic. Since yesterday I will pray, didn't give me. It was this morning when I woke up that he gave me that topic. It was, the topic first landed on my mind. I thought about it for hours. I didn't know what to say. I couldn't stand up from the bed. I've been awake for some time now. But I was just pondering on the topic. God, what kind of topic is this? I was praying, God, help me. I was reading the Bible. I was watching some other videos online. I was at the same time praying, God, help me. And I can't do another thing unless I do it. Unless I do the topic. And I'm like, okay, God, I want to go for the topic. Put your words in my mouth. Since you just want to use me as vessel. It's not as if it's my own word. It's not as if I... I know it. You just want to speak through me. You have just chosen me by your grace or by your privilege that you want to use me to speak that word. Because I promise I want to be useful for you every time. So the topic is every tidings. So I will first of all talk about what happened that brought that message. <laughs> Let me say the Yoruba, because it was the Yoruba God used to speak to me. He said, Nito, he share wu wu la firon mi siyo. You understand? Like, he share wu wu. A heavy tidings, a heavy message, a heavy job, a heavy assignment has been sent to me. Has been, has been sent through me to you. So this is, this is the heavy tidings. Let me first of all talk about Jeroboam. Jeroboam was a man that God used in the in the kingdom of Israel. You understand? After Solomon, there was judgment that God was going to rent the kingdom of Israel into two. And the two portion he will give it to to the descendant of David because David uh, did right 
with God. So and God promised him, you will never lack any child on the throne. So God divided 12 tribes into, into two and took two portions for David's descendant and the remaining ten to Jerubam. Jerubam didn't come from house of kings. The Lord didn't, I mean, he didn't know about it. He was just a man that was just faithful. I think he was faithful to Saul or maybe David or maybe Solomon or maybe he was he had been faithful to all of them. He was one of their uh, soldiers, something like that. I think I'm correct. <laughs> so and God lifted him up through prophet Ai is it Ai Joa let me look at the name. Prophet Aija. True prophet Aija, that was the prophet that prophesied this lifting. And that's what I'm still after. You can continue to do the will of God and then one day God lifts you up. It's possible. So all this, um, my staying with God, I know it's not going to be in vain. God always lifts people up. So let's continue to wait on his time of lifting. Maybe tomorrow or today because Maybe I will talk about that because I don't know. I think that should be the topic for today. That God will eventually come through. Let's make it a topic for today. By God's grace. So, Aija, why am I missing the name? Aija, okay. Aija was the one that God used to prophesy his lifting. And God gave him 10 portions out of 12. I gave the remaining two. To a descendant that the Lord has even covenanted not to take them from the throne. You can see how merciful, how how blessed the Lord blessed him. But instead of doing the will of God, he misbehaved. He sinned against God. You see, this is like a parable. You know, the Bible is written for admonition. It's written for us to see those that have misbehaved in the Bible, God punished them so that we in the world today we can run and not misbehave. So they are all like admonition, they are all like um, proverbs to us. So I will all talk about the story then I will now want each one of us to look at it in our own lives. So Jeroboam, Jeroboam was now uh, very sinful. Then one of his sons Maybe the first son or got sick. He did badly towards God. And because he has sinned against God, he can no longer come boldly to the presence of that prophet. That is what happens. When you sin against God, you lose the presence of the Holy Spirit. You lose the console that the Holy Spirit gives you. You see, I was very, very careful not to sin against God throughout my my stay in 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 this country, you know? Because I know that is the only time I find comfort. When everyone was running, I I was I was peaceful. It's just recently that people are saying that ah, why was I why was I so peaceful like that? I was peaceful because God made me peaceful. Even this recently that People, I was trying to tell people that I went through something and they didn't believe. You know, what is that trying to say? That is trying to say that when you stand with God, God will not put you to shame. But when you lose the Holy Spirit, when you sin against God, the Holy Spirit leaves. You start using your head to start calculating. This were the reasons why. I didn't put my hands in a lot of things because I know once I put my hands into it, nobody will console me. Nobody will comfort me. I'll start trying to use my head to solve situations. And when you are using your head to solve situations, it's it's stressful. It's difficult. It's hard. You can't do it. I'm telling you, you can't use your head to solve situations. It will drain you. It's the Holy Spirit that helps. So I, I, I didn't 
So, so what I'm just trying to say there is that let us continue waiting on God. That's what we are going to talk about in the evening, by God's grace. So, I, I that was that prophet. So he couldn't come boldly to him. So he made his wife to dress like an ordinary woman. You know, of course, as a queen, there is a particular way you dress and you have royalty all around you. So she dressed like an ordinary person in the streets and went to that prophet. But God will never, will never hide anything from his people. God already told Aija, well, that woman was coming. He said, Jeroboam's wife is coming home. Give her this very difficult message, this heavy tidings, this heavy message. And God pronounced judgment that that is the only son that will rise, that will have a befitting barrier among his family. That every other person will die shamefully. They will die without grief. That they will die without any befitting barrier. And it happened. It happened. And God sent judgment. The another person even came to, to government after that, that destroyed all his house. So today, it's a warning. Paravecho, you are there. The Lord lifted you up. Where you had nothing. I'm talking like a prophet now. Even me, I'm scared as I'm talking. Paravecho, you are there. But I will say it because it's me that offer myself to God. Every time I say, God, I offer my life to you. So this is time to prove it. Paravecho, you are there. The Lord lifted you up. You were always church girl, church boy, serving the Lord. This message will not, will not suit your heart. You may even listen to it and, and, and because of that you block me. But I will say it. I will say it. I will say it. But I will show you are there. When, when God, when you were seeking the face of God, let me use a very practical example now. When you are in Nigeria, you didn't even have means of traveling abroad. Abroad, All you were doing was just serving God, obeying God, and miraculously, God made a way. You went abroad. That is an example of God lifting Jerubah up from nothing. Then God lifted you up. Maybe even as a pastor, because we have some churches now that they will just tell the pastor, we want you to go and head our church in, in abroad. Then you get there. You see, oh, these people are rich. How can I be collecting money from them? How can I be scamming them? You started doing scamming like other pastors that have sold their soul to the devil. This is the judgment of God for you. You know, God is never partial. So we will say God has favorites. Yes, he has favorites if you... If you if it is your closeness to God that determines if you are God's favorite. But if you move away, you are no longer his favorite. You understand? So if you punish somebody, believe me, the same punishment is coming for, for another person. If God punish Jeroboam for, for... I wanted to use <laughs> Yoruba language. You understand? What does that mean in English? Like, when God lifted him up, God saw that he was faithful in little things. You know, God wasn't like it when he trusts us so much and then we mess up. God wasn't like it. What do you think was the sin of, of Moses? That he didn't get to the promised land. It was a sin of God trusting him that Moses will not, he will not misbehave. He will not, he will not listen to these people to sin against me. You know, and he joins them. The same thing those people were doing, he allowed himself to do it. That was the sin. God wanted to show him forth as a perfect man. I'm telling you. I don't know, maybe it was a teaching or maybe it's written in the Bible, but that is what I have learned, that that was the sin of Moses. That was why God was angry. 
You understand? God wasn't like it when he wants to show us forth. Look at how Job, God showed forth, show off, I mean, what's English? Show off Job to the devil. And then he passed through the test and he still come out excellently. God always likes it when he can show us off and then we don't still mess up. You know, all these sufferings that he suffered there in this country, some people will be like, you you suffer yourself by yourself. Yeah, you are you are right. You can say that again, but it's better. Say the God I have not uh, done bad thing to me before. Is the one I will now I will now misbehave to? Of course not. So it's better I suffer with that God and and He come and bless me at the same time. And for me to to sin against Him because of of. Of of small things that he can even give me more than that at his own right time, you know. People will look down on you. Ah, you are too late. Your other mates are already doing something. What about people that have it and then they lose it eventually? You see. So these are the things God used in talking to me, because I keep saying I must not lose the Holy Spirit. I must not lose the Holy Spirit. If I have lost the Holy Spirit, all this preaching. All these things, all this consolation, all these motivations that motivate me and not make me to sin. I will not love them. Nobody will encourage me. That would be like a lonely girl in the time of troubles. So today the Lord is telling us there is punishment. If God punished Jeroboam, this is a heavy tidings. But I want you to take it personally. Don't say, ah, he's my brother. Oh, this message is for brother Lagbaja. This message is for sister. So, 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 so. No, take it like it is for me. What are those things that God entrusted in your hands? And then you messed up. You know, I was just watching some videos online of uh, some men of God. They call them men of God that started with the Lord. And today... They have, they have gone to another side. They have gone into court. Why are people going into court? Because of money. Just like when I started this message, I said this message is something that you cannot make somebody remove money from his pocket and give me. Never. Just like the day I went to somebody's house with their house girlfriend and last wife in Nigeria, and then he's keeping girlfriend there. I told him, this is not right. He sent me out of his house. He did not give me money. He did not give me anything. So, but will I keep, call, keep quiet and be watching something? My spirit could not hold it. I wanted to keep quiet, but I cannot keep quiet. So I knew it was God that made me to talk. You understand? I really, really tried to, to not talk, but I don't know how I talked. <laughs> you understand? I don't know. He just came out and he became angry and said, get out of my house. You know? That is it. It's not a message that will make you put your, put your hands in your pocket and then you say, ah, this thing you said, I like it. Although the God can still use people to be blessed through it and then they will say they want to bless me. It's possible. That is, there is no doubt about that. But I'm saying that the main thing that is making this our New Day pastors to go in the way of sin and, and demonic and cults is because of money. When you tell somebody, oh, your alcohol is not so bad, even you yourself, you drank it in your house yesterday. You say, oh, this pastor, preach it, pastor, preach it, pastor. You say, oh, take money, take, uh, ah, take everything, take land, take uh, clothes. There will, there will say things that will make you want to, that will, you know, they will give you money for it. But God is sending out judgment today. This is a heavy tide. I'm, I'm very sure there's a judgment that is coming out. I don't know it. But this is another chance for repentance. Maybe you are listening to this. Maybe you are even one of those pastors and you come across this channel. You come across this video. God wants you to go back to, to Calvary. Don't stay in that thing you are doing. No? Because the judgment of God is always very fierce. Nobody can withstand the judgment of God. 
the judgment of the world if somebody do something bad to you sure you can still use god and beg that person but when god wants to send his judgment nobody can beg him you can't beg him it's only him that you can use to beg him and you have already seen it against that god and god will not send judgment unless the the pot of punishment is full he would have sent warning so this message is another warning that's why i touch with it every tidings the Lord can repent of his of his coming judgment if the person that receives it uh, say, God, I'm sorry. God can repent of his judgment. We saw that about Nineveh. Nineveh, they were, the Lord said he was going to destroy Nineveh. Even Jonah, when he was going about to tell them about the message, he was saying, God said he will destroy Nineveh. He didn't even tell them to repent. He didn't say God wants to be merciful to you. You are saying the Lord wants to destroy this this country. The Lord wants to destroy any of you. You have sinned against God. God wants to destroy you. But God turned his judgment away. Even though nowadays the navy is no longer available. I think eventually they sinned again. But what is that trying to say? It's trying to say that there is chance for repentance again. All those people that used to say eh, there's no chance for repentance, they are lying. While you are still on this earth, there's chance for repentance. There is chance for repentance. So today is another day for repentance. This message is not coming to you to condemn you. It's coming to you to tell you that Jesus will receive. Jesus is still receiving sinners. And that is the beauty, that is the joy of this, my message. That is, the, that is what I want to be doing for the Lord. To be bringing people from the shackles of sin. To be bringing people from the bondage of Satan. From the bondage of causes. From the bondage of mammon. When you are serving mammon, that is the god of, of, of money. He puts you under hard labor. He makes you do things that are difficult. I have a lot of discussions about that i'm going to share them very soon i was just waiting for the right time you know even though god said i should do it in the early hours of the morning but this morning you know i was i was just thinking about this topic i was like god help me god help me but i will do it very soon by god's grace so that is it oh children of god let us go back to god that's your promise i made a covenant with my Lord. That covenant you made, that you will serve him, that I will not sin against you. Lord, oh, you are the one I will serve. That is the type of salvation me I received. That salvation where I prayed, God, please, if you save me, I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will obey you. I will not go back to my sin again. That is the old type of salvation me I, I have. I don't know the type of salvation they are they are teaching people today nowadays that there is no covenant between you and God. So you just you just say, I have confessed to be serving Jesus and that's all. You didn't have a covenant that you will continue to look at. You don't know his covenant. It's a covenant that will keep that will keep ringing in your mind every time. Even when the devil wants to make you to sin, you will remember that covenant. Oh God, I promise I will not sin against you. I know what I suffered before God saved me. I will not go back to sin. You know those things you were going through. You know those times you were sleeping and you cannot sleep well. Those times that, that they will send you out. Uh, you will be coming down from a high something as if you want to fall down. Those bad dreams. Those uh, demons that used to make you to... That will be pressing you down in the sleep. And then you come back to God with salvation and all those things are gone. And you will, you will want to go back to those things. Of course not. Those are suffering now. Then you have peace. You sleep peacefully. Uh, even when turbulence is around you, you have peace in your heart. These are the things that salvation does. And then you now think you want to leave all these things for because of the God of Mammon. No. He doesn't want it. All this beauty, all this. And then another thing that God gives is the assurance of heaven. 
Salvation gives you assurance of heaven. A lot of people today, they don't know if they are going to go to heaven or not. They are just living their life anyhow. They have lost everything. So people are depressed. Salvation will not allow you to be depressed. So if you are depressed, go and check your salvation. So these are the things the devil takes away from you and gives you the difficult things. His burden is very heavy. It's Jesus' burden that is light. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's Jesus' yoke that is easy and is light. But when you, you are going towards the devil, it gives you very heavy load. You think you are enjoying, you are not enjoying. Go and look at the punishment he's giving you. They are worse. So today is another day to repent. If you started with God, please come back. Come back to God. Don't let mammon take your heart. Don't let mammon deal with you and turn you to what you are not. The Lord is ready and able to save. He will save you in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry to use this um, sensitive topic. Maybe if somebody like Mudbad have listened to this, my type of message one time, maybe would have come back to God because I heard that it started from the church. You see, it started from the church and then maybe he was still saying, ah, one day I will come back to church, I will come back. But he was going deeper and deeper and they were putting him into more, more, more things that he couldn't come out from. You see, we have a lot of them like that. The one they called to, he started from the church. Um, Olamide too. Somebody said that he started from, I don't know about his background, but someone said he started from the church. But because of the love of money, love of fame, you are the one that you should go and ask them. They are going through a lot. But if someone like that is listening to this message today, the Lord is saying, come back. I will still take you. See, now Jesus we receive. Come to Jesus, come today. I don't really know. Maybe I got the lyrics. But I know there is a line there that says, sinners, Christ will receive you. He will, he will receive you. So today is another day to be received by God. You will have to go back on your news. I mean, I don't do all those say after me kind of salvation. Let it come from your heart of heart. Go back to God. God, I am sorry. I, I used to serve you. Don't let the judgment you sent on Jeroboam, don't let it come upon me. This one is a heavy title. It is, it is judgment message. There are times that message will come out and we say, uh, repent to. This one is judgment. God is sending judgment very soon. I don't know who this message is meant for, but I want to believe that as God has sent me to say it, he will bring those people that will listen to it, he will bring them in the name of Jesus. So we are going to end it there. Since it's the message of God, it's not me that will interpret it to people. The Lord will do that by himself. So let us pray so that we live the message into the hands of God. Father, we thank you for today's message. Lord, this message is so powerful that even me, myself, my body is shaking as I'm talking. My body is shivering. I'm like, God, have mercy. How did I get to this point that I'm saying this kind of hard message? But that is what you, you do. When someone delivery gives their lives to you or his life to you, you use them more than the they can never think of that you can use them. Father, I thank you for this privilege. Oh Lord, the message has gone out as you sent me. Because even when I wanted to start, I don't know where to start, I don't know how to start. But you started saying it by yourself. Father, Lord, people will hear this. Please let it do what you have sent it out to do. In the name of Jesus. And I myself, don't let this world stand against me. Please keep me by yourself. Keep me to cover, keep me to yourself, oh Lord. Don't let me leave your side. Don't let me become somebody that used to preach the word of God and now is doing contrary to that word of God. Please don't let that be my portion. Please, Lord, and as many that are already at the edge of that judgment, ah, Lord, you can still save. If you saved Nineveh because they turned back to God, Father, please let these people receive mercy from you and let them also come back to you. 
in the name of Jesus. You can turn away your judgment. You can turn away your judgment. That is you. Oh, Lord, please help us. Thank you for answer prayers. In Jesus' name. Father, refill me up with the Holy Spirit so that I don't become empty, so that I will always have enough in my storage to give out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Have a great day. We meet by evening by God's grace. Amen.